Welcome! Today I'll show you how to build graphical user interface applications that are performant, small and portable with modern C++ and WebView for the UI layer. By using modern C++ and a small library, we'll be able to interact with the native WebView layer on the operating system we're using, whether that's Microsoft's WebView, Apple's WebKit or the WebKit GTK on Linux. This way, we'll be able to produce a single, very small executable, as small as 48 kilobytes on some platforms for the Entry Hello World app, which starts instantly and is very performant. Instead of bundling a browser engine like Electron, we use the system's native WebView component, just like Rust's Tauri framework does, but this is even more minimal. On Windows, we use Edge WebView 2, on Linux, WebKit GTK, and on Mac, WebKit. The result is a dramatically smaller executable and overall bundle size and instant startup times. The app on the right is our C++ WebView executable that's compiled to a minimal binary and includes the WebView within it as a static string. It amounts to 48 kilobytes on Linux. As a contrast, an Electron app built on the same system targeting Linux has 80 total files amounting to 297 megabytes. WebView is a tiny C and C++ library which exposes a very simple API to create a native window and render the HTML using the platform's WebView. It's fast, minimal and small. It also exposes a simple API to bind a C++ function and expose it in JavaScript in the UI. This is our main CPP file, the only C++ file I have for this minimal example. And you can see we include the WebView header from the WebView library. It's a single header library, so this includes all of the API functions we need. There are actually only a few functions. We also include the HTML as a C++ header file that includes the HTML as a static string. We build that with Vite dynamically, so you actually write a normal front-end application with Vite and it gets compiled and then we transform it to a string with a simple Node.js script. I'll show you how later. We have two entry points, WinMain and Main. If we're on Windows, of course, we use the WinAPI WinMain function and on all other platforms, we just use a main function. And here's how we initialize the WebView. We create a new WebView that I call main window. It has a couple of options. Then we set the title, the initial size, and we load, an HTML, we load the HTML, which is a static string at this point, which we imported in the index.html header file. And finally, we run. Now let's talk about the UI layer. As I mentioned, all of the UI is compiled to a single HTML document that includes everything, style scripts in the HTML, and it gets then converted to this static string in a header file, which we can use to uh, actually include it in our executable binary. Now, how this happens is, this is my Vite config. I use only one Vite plugin, single file. This bundles all of the assets to a single HTML file, as it's quite self-explanatory. And here's how everything happens in my package JSON. I do a, an ordinary Vite build, and then I have a post build script. This script is very simple. It reads the file that's outputted by Vite, the HTML file. It removes uh, the white space, escapes some characters which would interrupt the C++ function, and then it just generates, it just concatenates the string to a simple header file. And we save that in the dist directory. When we run Vite build, everything uh, actually comes together with a post build step that takes the output HTML and uh, converts it to a header file. As you can see, my build happens in 30 milliseconds and my bundle size is 1.53 kilobytes, uh, which is great. To build the actual application, I use CMake for cross-platform C++. I have a whole video on how I structure C++ project with CMake. You can check it out. It's linked in the video description. Uh, this uh, CMake project is very straightforward. We just have a project, C++ project we define called app. And then we add the WebView library as a git sub module using uh, CMake's fetch content. And we add the JSON library uh, for 
uh, bindings and inter-process communication, we need that. And finally, we add an executable target and link and include directories. Quite straightforward and simple CMake setup. So with this whole thing, we ensure very good performance. I already mentioned the bundled executable for this minimal Hero World example is 48 kilobytes. If we add the JSON library, we go to 60, 70 kilobytes. Of course, it depends on the platform on Windows. It might be a little bit more on Mac too, but we're still under 100 kilobytes for the basic Hello World app. And as we build our application, we have the ability to produce a small single executable application that starts fast because it uses the native web view. Also, as you can see, memory usage is very much under control. And of course, CPU usage is negligible. To build a desktop application, we need to communicate between the UI layer and C++ so that we have operating system access so that we can write our business logic and communication logic with C++ and fast native code to have good performance. Thankfully, the WebView library exposes a binding API, which allows us to call C++ functions from JavaScript. And that's really all we need. Let's talk about bindings. I have an example here. Bindings allow you to call C++ functions from the web. And that's how you communicate between C++ and your web view. Now, here I have a simple example. Uh, this is a very basic read file function in C++ that reads a file from the file system. And here's the interesting part. We bind a read file function in the main window. And that is essentially a one the callback which takes arguments as a string and returns a string. We parse these arguments with the JSON library because all of the functional arguments passed our JSON, and then we get the file type, a file path from the first argument. Then we read the file and return JSON again, which is the file contents. Notice this workflow. We have JSON in and JSON out. That's important. That's why we need the JSON library to communicate with the front end, but it's also quite straightforward once you get the hang of it. And let's go to the JavaScript side. Here we select a slot, just some element to insert the textual content into, and we use the bindings function. You can see it's bound to the window object. We just have read file and we pass the file uh, path, and then we replace the text contents of the HTML element. And if we open the application, you can see text content from the file. This textual string is actually read from a text file on the file system. I would also say, I also want to mention, if you're watching this video, you probably are considering making a desktop application with a web user interface. And that's maybe not what you want if you haven't thought about it. Because if you have a simple app you want to build, or maybe not that simple of an app you want to build, you probably can use an immediate mode UI library to build a truly native app, something like DRM GUI with an OpenGL renderer and C++, or the Rust route with um, eGUI and eFrame. You, with both of these, they're very similar. You can build a very um, simple and it, it will be very easy to build a graphic user interface app that's natively rendered with the GPU. It's immediate mode, extremely performant. If performance and uh, a native desktop app is what you are after, this might be a better option for most modern use cases. There's still some use cases for web UI if you need and want retained mode for some reason. Such minimal uh, web uh, user interface is actually not a bad retained mode UI you can embed. But the caveat is, you shouldn't do everything on the UI layer with JavaScript. If you want performance and good, um, if you want per truly a performant application like this, you should aim to do everything on the C++ side. This includes all of your business logic. You are forced to do the operating system interactions there, but also anything like networking and the HTTP requests you make to an API should happen there. Keep your JavaScript and interpreted JavaScript minimal and the performance will surely be very good. Sort of like old school web development where you, you only use JavaScript for UI interactivity and kept it at minimum. With this, I think I'll wrap this video. Let me know in the comments about what you think about this approach. And if you enjoy the content, don't forget to subscribe to get notified when I release another one of these videos. And as always, take care.